My name is Fahad Badar. I'm the first Arab male to climb both Everest and Lhotse at the same trip. In this short video, I'll be giving you advice of what to pack for an Everest base camp trek or an Everest summit attempt. We start with body wear. For the body wear for the base camp track, which take around two weeks uh, from Lokla all the way to base camp, you will need the usual things. Like for example, for underwear, I will propose having a polyester underwear. This is under armor, polyester underwears. For the base layer, there is two types of base layers that I would recommend. There is polyester, polyester base, which I used it when it was cold at night, or sometimes if I'm tracking in a cold environment. And there is wool base layers. I use them mainly while relaxing the tea houses or uh, at the base camp. For your normal clothes for the trek to base camp, I used a light uh, tracking pants. This is North Face light tracking pants. And along with that, you can either have a t-shirt, a cotton t-shirt, or I would recommend a polyester t-shirt, which is easier to wash and clean, or long sleeve uh, polyester t-shirts, shirts, which are better to protect your hand from the sun. In terms of uh, going to uh, base camp, sometimes you will need at night to have different kind of jackets. For example, you will need a windbreaker. This is a North Face windbreaker for the days that they are not very cold, but they are very windy. In the same time, a rain jacket, a Gore-Tex rain jacket, this is Red Fox, it's essential. It, you will use it mainly at rainy days, but also as you do the climb, which I will talk about in more details. You can have a mid-weight tracking pants if you need them. They are a bit warmer than the lighter weight. You can use them along with the base layer. And also it's important to have a Gore-Tex pants to protect you while it's raining and later for the climb. For mid-layer, I have two mid-layers. I have a, a smart wool mid-layer with a hoodie, which you will use it only at uh, colder time. And there is uh, this fleece, wrap fleece mid-layer, which I like also with a hood. Going up to the base camp, it will not get very cold unless at night and sometimes the tea houses, although some of them have warm, but you can have like a light down jacket that you can combine along with your base layer and your mid layer. And also it's important to pack some uh, light shirt and maybe light pants or light sh shorts to sleep with, which are very comfortable. This is cotton. As you reach the base camp, while staying in the base camp, you will need different clothes as you go through to camp one through the combo fall and as you go to the upper camps. For climbing in the base camp, mainly to camp one and camp two, I used a heavier tracking pants. So this is uh, Columbia with uh, heat reflection inside. So I use them in combination with my polyester base layers polyester base layers, also Columbia. And for the colder nights as we are going, I used uh, the Gore-Tex uh, shell pants. This is a uh, hard shell pants. However, as it became warmer, it's very important to be able to open it from the side in order to take it off and to uh, cool down there. As you climb, usually I don't use the down pants. The down pants, I keep them mainly while I'm relaxing at camp one or camp two, or at nice in base camp when it's very cold. However, as you climb, using the down pants, you overheat, you know? Although that you can open it from the sides, but if you feel too cold, you can use the down pants while climbing. For the upper body, as you climb through to camp one and camp two from the base camp, including with your base layers, which is the polyester base layer. The mid layers, I either use the smart wool or the fleece. Both of them are fine. I felt more comfortable in the smart wool uh, uh, hoodie and with the head cover. So that was really great there. And in combination with that, with my base layer, my wool mid layer, I mainly use the light down because as you move, you generate heat. So actually, it's good to feel a bit cool, not very warm because you sweat as you go ahead. But as you reach to the upper camps, for example, at camp two and camp one, while relaxing, I will use the down pants and I will use this big parka. Sometimes at base camp, I had to use it at night when it's very cold. However, like I, I never used it while actually climbing, only while relaxing at the upper camps. 
The Gore-Tex also is a good combination to combine it above your uh, mid layer and upper layer where you feel it's, it's, it's a bit cold but it's not that cold that you need a down jacket. Uh, the last piece of equipment or cloth that's for your body wear is the summit suit. For summit suit, I used North Face summit suit. Uh, I'm 170 centimeter, which is 5'7". However, I use the small size uh, summit suit because it's good to have it a bit tight to, in order to uh, trap all the heat. With that, I used it for climbing to camp three and camp four and for the summit night. In combination with that, I used my uh, base layers, the polyester base layers under the summit suit. And only for summit night, I used my uh, fleece in addition, which kept me warm. And as I was moving, I was avoiding the traffic. I was avoiding the crowds. I did not feel any cold in my body. Now we start with the headwear. With the headwear, as you go to the base camp, as you track to the base camp, one of the most important thing is to have a buff. This is a light buff to protect your face, protect your ears, protect your sides from the sun, and also from the dust as you walk to the base camp. And there also, you should have a hat. This is a good hat to wear while relaxing at uh, the different tea houses. And I have a smart wool hat to, wo to wear as I'm tracking to the base camp. A sun hat is very important. The sun can be very strong, so it's important to protect your head all the time. And glasses. For me, I use the glacier glasses from the beginning. Uh, for me, I have two just in case. Uh, as you climb to the upper camp, just in case if you break one, you have the other one. It's good to have a hard case for that so you don't break it. So this is for trek up to the base camp. As you are in the base camp, as you are relaxing in the base camp, you'll need a hat just to keep your head warm sometimes and walking around the camp. And also, as you climb to camp one and camp two, it's important to pack a sun hat that I wear under my helmet. Also, I use a, a, a wool buff to protect my neck and also to protect my face as I go to camp one and camp two. It's optional, you can use this mask which keep your face warm. However, for me, I felt that it was too warm to wear it, even going through the night through the combo folds. And also, as optional, you can use uh, a neck warmer. Under your hat, for me, I usually I cover my head with a buff because as I move with the hat and with the helmet, I get too warm, but also you can use a smart wool uh, head cover. As you go to the upper camps, I have a down head cover, a beanie, which is very warm to stay at camp one and camp two. And also at the upper camps, like in camp three, camp four, as I'm relaxing in the tent at night, I use it to cover my head. And it's very light and very easy to pack. Of course, the glasses. And also in terms of uh, snow goggles, I have two types, the clear type, and I have the dark type to use as you climb to the upper camps and if you have any snowstorms and for the summit day also. This face mask is Mermot and uh, one important thing on the face mask to make sure it fits you well and also it cover your neck and it can cover while you're wearing the snow goggle. It doesn't leave any skin exposed and it's flexible enough to put your oxygen mask here and it will be able to protect your skin and not to leave any exposed skin. So this is the head mask. Now it's the handwear. For the handwear, for myself, I use different systems. So as you track to the base camp, mainly you need uh, two types. I have a very light one and this is mainly I use it to protect me from the sun. So this is light mountain hardware. And also I use uh, aligner gloves from North Face and when it's a bit cold uh, in the daytime and as I'm walking there. So, and those you can use them also to wear them under your other gloves as you go higher and as you reach the base camp. And also I had uh, a small lightweight uh, smart wool gloves that I mainly used it at the tea houses or sometimes uh, in my room as I'm sleeping if I'm feeling a bit cold uh, in my sleeping bag. As you go and you climb to the upper camps, like for example in camp one and camp two, going through the combo fall, I use two systems. First, I use uh, the black diamond. This is the black diamond uh, uh, guide gloves. Uh, they have 
two layers inside them, so it's important to be able to remove this and to dry it when it's needed. And I used it wearing it at night as I'm climbing through the combo fall, and I used the liner gloves under them. As I go higher and I felt warmer, I used to replace them and wear my uh, wrap leather gloves, alpine leather gloves, to help me with the ropes. And also for the black diamond, they are leather here, so it's very good grip on the ropes. And the same as I climb to camp two, I mainly use two combinations, either this one along with the liner gloves, or I use the leather gloves as it became a bit warmer. As you go to the upper camp, the camp three, camp four, and the summit night, mainly I use the combination of using the liner gloves along with those the mermot mittens, which has two combination, two layers. And while climbing or descending from the summit, as it became warmer, I changed to my black diamond uh, gloves. You can have a bit lighter gloves, which is uh, like, for example, those soft shell gloves with leather. And you can use them as, a com as a, something in between, between your uh, black diamond heavy guide gloves and between your other liner gloves. So this is the handwear. Now we do the footwear. For the footwear, there is two stages, reaching the base camp and climbing to the upper camps. To the base camp uh, for trekking, use a normal trekking uh, shoes. I use uh, a summer trekking shoes, which is keep my legs warm because as you walk and uh, it's waterproof. I use the North Face uh, trekking shoes and they are really good and comfortable. It's very important to buy your shoes in advance and to use them for a few weeks before you start your base camp trek. As you are in the tea houses and relaxing, you can use a down uh, shoes. This is from the North Face, which is it relaxes your feet and you can use it inside the tea houses and around the tea houses, like just walking around. And for me, I always have uh, rubber shoes just to use them in the toilets and to use them while taking a shower. As you reach the base camp, within the base camp, just to chill out there, relaxing the base camp, and to walk around the base camp, I use my normal trekking uh, shoes and I use the down booties to relax there. If it became a bit colder, I have another down boot is a bit heavier that I use at the base camp and also I use them mainly in camp one and camp two to keep my legs warm as I'm relaxing in the tent. As to climb there, like for example, before reaching uh, Everest Base Camp, I went to Labuche and I climbed Labuche Mountain. You can use those of the G12 uh, Le Sportiva shoes. I, I, I used them up to 6,000 meter and they were fine to use. But as you go through the combo fall up to Camp 2, I used them also. I felt a bit colder at Camp 2, but up to Camp 1, they were fine and they are lighter than the bigger ones. Of course, for reaching Camp 3, Camp 4, and for the summit, I used the, the Sportiva or Olympus. Those are the triple boots. So they have uh, actually th three with a gator here. So this is how they look from the inside. And this is this is the boots. And uh, the good thing is that they kept my leg warm. I did not have to use any leg warmers and they were fine. As I was uh, relaxing in the tent and sometimes walking around in uh, camp two and camp one, if I use those shoes, I used to combine those down booties and just put them inside. One important thing is that I see some people sometimes walking only with this around the camp. You can do it if you want, but um, I did not do it because I was worried to damage those. And if you damage them, it's very risky for your feet. So I avoided using them to walk. I just, if I'm relaxing in the tent, sometimes I kept them or I combine them with those. And also, I have those from wrap, those are down, those are not to walk with, but I use them for my feet while relaxing in the camp, at the upper camps, and sometimes while sleeping, and they are very small and very easy to pack. If you talk about the socks, uh, there's different type of socks. This is a normal tracking uh, socks that I use them mainly to reach up to the base camp. And sometimes the base camp, I wear them when it was warm and I can wear them. However, I mainly use smart wools. This is two different smart wools uh, socks. Sometimes I use them at night when I felt warm going to the base camp. And the base camp, I use them. And climbing to the upper camps, mainly I use those smart wool uh, socks heavy ones and they were comfortable and also easy to dry. It's important to have more than one pair as you climb to the upper camp. As you reach the camp, you can dry your uh, the socks you used while climbing and the other one, you can wear another one just to keep you warm. 
for the summit night and also climbing to camp one, uh, sorry, to camp three and camp four on the summit, I used those smart words, the bigger ones, the heavier ones, and they were long and they fit perfectly with my uh, Respertiva Olympus. Also, I had uh, those uh, liners, wool liners, that I, I know some people like to wear them below their uh, smart wool uh, uh, midweight or heavyweight socks. For me, I did not use them, and when I used them, I was not feeling comfortable. However, some people highly recommend it, and if you feel so, please use. So, this is the footwear that I used for Everest. Uh, for packs and bags, uh, there are four items that I used while uh, going to Everest. First, you need your duffel bag, and this is mainly to carry your things up to base camp. And uh, for me, I use two duffel bags as I'm summiting Everest, so you're allowed to have up to two uh, duffel bags. You can get an extra one, and you have to pay for it if you would like to have more things. I use the North Face. They are durable. They are good. They are waterproof. Although, inside, I use different uh, compression bags to keep my things tight and in place I'll show them later and also you can line it with plastic bags just in case if it's raining heavily they don't leak and you don't damage your clothes so those are the duffel bags for the climbing and also a small backpack a small backpack you can use it as you trek to the base camp you can use up to 35 liter or 40 liter backpack you can use it while traveling to Kathmandu and uh, up to base camp they are fine however as you're climbing to the upper camps you need to use a proper climbing uh, backpack this is uh, mountain hardware my guide used to use this so i liked it so much that i bought one for myself but they are good you have spaces here to keep your uh, carbiners and other uh, climbing uh, equipment here and also they are big enough to have your your needed stuff climbing up to the upper camps and also you can put your oxygen tank there as you climb to camp 4 and to the summit so this is mountain hardware this is you can have any brand you like and this is north face so this is mainly the bags and packs for the camping gear you'll need different items as you go either for the base camp and to the upper camps usually for the trek on the base camp you'll be staying in tea houses and most of them will have beds and different tea houses will have different cleaning level however i would recommend having a sleeping bag um, it's up to you up to what degrees you want for me i would recommend a minus 20 just in case you can keep it open if you feel a bit warm you can rent it from Kathmandu or you can bring your own or you can have minus 10 or minus 5 if you feel uh, warmer as you sleep in the in the tea houses for me this is my mountain hardware minus 20. as you go to the upper camps in everest mainly i took my uh, minus 40 sleeping bags and even for at night usually minus 40 was more than enough for me because I'll keep only my base layer as I'm sleeping in my sleeping bags at the upper camps like for example at camp 4 I use them in combination with my summit suit this is from Ansalita from Argentina and uh, also they have north face and inferno they have minus 20 and minus 40 so this is the sleeping bag uh, it's important to have a foam mattress as you stay in the base camp or as you go to the upper camps. This is Thermarest, which is very light and easy to carry. Also, inflatable uh, mats. This is my Neo Air inflatable mats. I had to buy new ones because I lost both of those as I'm descending from Everest, so I got new ones. And uh, for me, I always have an inflatable pillow just to keep my neck comfortable, so and it's very light and very easy to carry as I go to the upper camps. Okay, water bottles. It's uh, good to have uh, Nalgene water bottles. I have usually two, one liter each, that I, I use with me as I go to the base camp or the upper camps. It's good also to have a uh, pee bottle. It's very important to have them as you go to the upper camps because it will save you the time of going outside the tent and doing so. Pee bottles are very important. However, have them separate than your normal water bottles. Bottle covers. bottle covers are very important, this is Nolgene also, to keep your uh, bottles from freezing. However, as you go to the upper camps, in combination to this, you need to keep them inside your backpack. Even if your backpack has things on the side, don't keep them outside unless it's sunny and you can keep them outside. Uh, a thermos is important to keep hot water. As you climb to the upper camps, uh, it's good at night to have some hot drink. It will keep you warm as you do there. Uh, 
your own cups this is insulated cups because once you have your drinks you can keep them warm for some time also your own bowl and uh, spoons it's good to have them however most of the expeditions uh, they will have their own at the base camp so they'll have their own uh, things that they will supply to you and they will be clean and also at the tea houses as you go to the upper camps you will be using those things more so this is the main items in the camping gear now accessories I'll be talking about some of the other items that you would like to take with for your base camp trek or for your summit attempt. How, I may not be comprehensive, I may miss some items, but I'll try as much as possible to tell you all the items that you take. Of course, one of the most important items are the headlamps. This is two type of headlamps. This is with some extra batteries for the extra power. Usually for headlamps, you'll need them even in your trek to the base camp for the nights when you walk around uh, your tea house or sometimes in your room if you want to use them there. And also as you would do most of your climbing, for example, to camp one at night, you need a good headlamp and also for your summit night. So headlamps are very important and important with them also to have extra batteries. Uh, I would recommend uh, lithium batteries because they perform better at the uh, cold weather. And also it's good to have a hand torch, small or like a bit bigger. They come handy sometimes to keep it in your pocket as you walk around. Also one thing that I like to take and as I go to the upper camps, it's my uh, oximeter just to check my oxygen level. Usually for your summit attempt, most probably your uh, expedition leader will have one if you don't have your own. This is my North Face uh, base camp cam pack. I use it mainly for my toilet items, uh, my toothbrush, your toilet paper. It's good also to have wet wipes. Uh, they will become really helpful as you are using it up to the base camp and also for the upper camps as uh, there is no water there. And f as I'm going to the upper camps, I use a smaller pack to carry my necessary items. One important item is sun cream. You can burn from the sun even at your way to the base camp, so don't underestimate the sun in Everest. And the upper camps will be more hot there actually. I use SPF 50 and also your uh, lip balm. One thing good to have, I have always this, this is just to clean my goggles and to clean my glasses. A uh, pocket knife, it's important to have on you all the time. Keep it simple, keep it small, just for the main uh, items. It's good to have a small lock for your duffel bag and for your valuables as, as you go to the base camp and as you keep things in the base camp. It's good to have a small towel that you can use. You will have opportunities at some of the tea houses to take a shower and at the base camp when the weather is right and there is hot water available, you can take a shower there. So it's good to have, this is microfiber uh, towel. Also medicines. In medicines it's always personal, but always have the basic ones, you know, for headache, for diarrhea, and also Dymox if you need it. I use Dymox during my climb as it uh, actually it was very good and it helped me to avoid altitude sickness. One thing that's very important for me is uh, tapes for blisters. You will get blisters as you climb Everest. Different people have different levels of blisters. For me I got blisters mainly at uh, my summit attempt in the seven days that I summited Everest and then Lotse. So I had to carry them with me all the time. A bag for your uh, medicines. Your personal entertainment, you know, if you want to bring your iPad, use it at the base camp, your phone, and also your cameras. For me, I have my Sony camera that I was able to use sometimes. I had my GoPro, however, I did not use it much. I wish I used it more. Plus, I have this extension that I can fix it in my helmet. Most of the time as you climb you will not have opportunity to use your camera unless it's a bit warm and also the risk of taking off your gloves I did not want to take that risk and I use my mobile for most of the photos. One important thing to carry is chemical hand warmers and foot warmers. For me I used hot hand brand. Uh, they were very good, I used them. As you go to the upper camps, they become less useful because there is less oxygen there. However, I always use them and whenever I go for, let's say, to camp one, camp two, camp three, I always put some uh, under my gloves. You don't put them directly in your skin so you don't, they don't burn. So that we, I put them between my liner gloves and my gloves. Uh, foot warmers, I mainly use them at the upper camp sometimes at night. However, I did not use them while climbing because my foot was always warm as I was always moving. Uh, earplugs are very good to use them sometimes at base camp if you are near the dining tent and it's noisy tea houses if it's noisy as the walls are very thin and also as the up at the upper camps as it become uh, more windy uh, this is the compression bags 
Uh, it's good to keep your things inside them and keep them tight as you'll be tight on space. So you can keep your thing. There's different sizes. This is C2 Summit brand. And also dry bags. Dry bags are very important to keep your valuables. As you trek to the base camp, it will rain. And as you go up with the snow, sometimes it gets moist. So I use them there. And also you can put your, uh, for example, if you are trekking to the base camp, it's important to have your rain jacket, but also a down jacket just in case if it gets cold. So it's good to keep them inside a dry bag just in case if it rain and your backpack uh, leak. Also, uh, it's good to have a good uh, power bank to keep your to keep uh, your equipment charged your charger your connections wires and also a solar charger i use the anchor solar charger it worked very well you'll have a lot of sun as you are uh, in everest you can use it in the base camp and i took it also with me to the upper camps and you get good charge with this and i usually i connect it to my power bank so this is the miscellaneous items that you may would like to take with you to the track to the base camp and to the upper camps to the base camp, you will have some power outlets in the tea houses and for a small fee, you can charge your equipment. And usually at the base camp, at the dining tent, there will be a small charging station, but can get very busy. So a solar charger is highly recommended. Now the final part, which is uh, your climbing gear. Um, as you track to the base camp, uh, all what you need is will be like uh, a good tracking pools. I would highly recommend. This is Black Diamond. They are collapsible, so they are easy to pack, and they will help you and reduce the pressure on your knees as you climb. Um, as you are going to the upper camps, you can take them. It's optional. You can take one if you would like. Usually for me, I use only one. And mainly, for example, from uh, camp uh, one to camp two. And sometimes, as I'm climbing to camp three, I use them just for balance. But they are not essential at the upper camps for for the base camp track I highly recommend them you have those which is for the snow I did not really need to use them as I was going uh, you don't need them for base camp and for the upper camps you don't need them even if you use it now for climbing above base camp you will need some different set of equipment as you will be mainly on snow there an ice axe is very important to have a good ice axe it has to be light and the height has to be good that you can hold it and you can use it in the snow as you climb up. This is my gravel ice axe, which I used them for a couple of mountains, including for Everest. Crampons, this is gravel crampons. You will use them for your boots. It's important to make sure that they fit your boots. So for me, for example, my Olympus uh, uh, Sportiva and my G12s. And it's important before you start climbing that you make sure that they fit into your boots because if you need to take them and put them on you will not spend lots of time in the snow trying to putting them on it's good to have a leather bag to protect your backpack in case you need to pack them back in your backpack they will not damage your backpack or damage your other clothes climbing helmet i use black diamond you know it's it's good it's light and i put a base here for my gopro Mechanical ascender is important to use them on the fixed ropes as you go from base camp to the different camps up to the summit. And it's good to have a rope that's with a good size that you can use and you can hook to your uh, harness. And also another one, and this is uh, also black diamond carabiners, it's good to use them to hook yourself on the safety rope. In my last trip when I was in uh, Chimonix, actually I bought those and for this actually it's nice you can adjust the uh, adjust the length as you use it instead of using the fixed uh, length one also it's important to have a belly device or a pill device you can use either if you would like the figure eight or you can use the more traditional one for me i found the bigger ones are more useful in uh, everest than the smaller ones as the ropes can be thicker and sometimes because of the cold and the freeze they are harder to get into the smaller ones so the bigger ones were much better to use you can have some extra ropes uh, and unlocking uh, carabiners is good to it's for quickly to hook your ice axe and other equipment so you need a couple of those and different combinations your harness this is black diamond harness it's important to have a harness that can fit over your summit suit and this is mainly for climbing and attempting the summit and also it's good if you can open them from down so it's easier to take off if you need it without need the need to slipping them down but they have to fit over your summit suit so and your other layers whenever you are wearing them because you will not use summit suit up to camp two you'll use it for camp three camp four and lastly 
Don't forget your country flag. This is the most important to fly it on the summits of Everest and Lhotse and any other mountain that you attempt. So I try to provide the basic items that you will need for a trip to the base camp or for a summit attempt. I may not mention some common sense items like your passport, your money and some other items. It's good to have a smaller bag that you use uh, for the travel to uh, Kathmandu with some city clothes that you can keep that bag in Kathmandu when you go back and you take a shower there and you change. And if you suggest or if you would like me to talk about anything else, please mention that in the comments. Thank you very much.